Deku had the bloody festival quirk. Hello, it's I, Wakami What If, presenting you with this. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Midoriya is quite the average child, and Inko's happy for this, because he's always been nice, he's never been mean or anything. She cherishes him very much, but he's been depressed for a while. It's because all the kids pick on him because he's different. Currently, he's at the age of five, so he's going to get checked for a quirk, and she hopes he gets something good so that they'd probably fit in with him, or he'd fit more in. He's picked on because, well, someone apparently killed an animal in front of him, and he tried to help the animal. He put his hands towards the, the animal's carcass and tried to help the animal and shook it. And this creeped out the other kids, so he wasn't exactly seen as normal after that day. When all Izuku was trying to do was help, is what Inko says. While she gets up in the morning, and then she thinks, I gotta go get Izuku. She immediately walks out of her room and walks towards Izuku's bedroom and knocks on the door. She knocks a little while and doesn't really hear Izuku moving. She immediately opens the door and sees that the room's completely dark and there's no light in the room at all. She tries to flip the lights, but there's no no light coming out. It's as if the light bulbs are broken. And she looks around and she doesn't see Midoriya, but she hears the door slam behind her. And she looks around and doesn't see him still. She's starting to panic because she thinks someone might have entered the house. Midoriya wouldn't pull a prank like this. Midoriya wouldn't do anything like this either. And she gets starts to get more panicky. Her breathing starts getting more irregular. And then all of a sudden, she hears Midoriya say, Oh, Mom, are you in there? And she, he immediately knocks on his own door. And she says, Honey, I'm in heat. And before she could say anything... She feels a hand on her back and hears someone whisper into her ear, say that he is not needed and that he's worthless or I'll fucking kill you both. And she looked in the mirror that was directly across from her and she saw this man behind her. This man had stitches all over him. His entire body was made of stitches almost. His eyes were bloodshot red. And his teeth were razor sharp. And his fingernails were super long and, sh and sharp as well. And they were digging into her back. And she ended up screaming out, Midoriya, you're completely useless. Why don't you get out of my house? You're a disappointment. I've never loved you. And once she screams this out... Midoriya immediately runs out of the house, runs down the stairs and out of the house. Well, Inko says, I, I did what you said. Now please don't go after him. And the man merely says, oh, I didn't say I wouldn't go after him still. <laughs> and then she says, no, don't. And before she could even say anything else, the man plunges her hand, his hand directly through her chest and rips out the heart and starts to munch down and onto it with his razor heart sharp teeth. And she falls to the ground with a loud thump. And Izuku, who has not completely left the house yet, manages to hear that. And then he starts to think about how irregular her voice sounded. It was very shaky. Wait. Could this be a home invasion? He immediately runs out of the house and goes to the Bakugos. He knocks on their door, and Mitsuki greets him. And he ends up telling the situation. And Mitsuki gets what's happening. She calls the police very, very quickly. And once the police arrives, the man's gone. The man's completely gone. And Izuku is left an orphan now. Because his father abandoned him at a young age and his mother was just killed by a villain and Izuku just turned five and they have to check his quirk still 
to put him into the system, verified completely into the system. So the police take him to the quirk doctor, and so does Mitsuki. They check what his quirk is with the quirk doctor, and once they arrive to his office, and the quirk doctor checks, he immediately sees that the quirk that Midoriya has is known as Bloody Festival. And it's quite the dangerous quirk, the doctor adds. And Midoriya says, wait, can I become a hero with it? And the doctor says, become a hero with it? I mean, sure, if you put your mind to it, but honestly, this seems to be more of a quirk for a villain. And as soon as the doctor says this, the police are on alert, because whenever someone with a so-called villainous quirk appears, they're usually ostracized, and that causes them to go down the path of villainy. They immediately look at the kid, and they think that he, he's going to be a future villain immediately, as soon as they see his eyes. His eyes changed dark a little, grim, and Midoriya says, uh, so, if I'm not wrong, wasn't the, wasn't the person who killed my mom's quirk a blood-related quirk too? And the police say, we're not on file to tell you, we can't tell you exactly what his quirk was, and we can't tell you much about how your mother died from the man. And Izuku immediately snapped, and he looked at the officer to his left and said, You're not going to tell me about my own mother's death and who caused the death. How about this? If you were in my shoes, what would you do? And he looked at him and stared daggers through him. And the cop immediately said, I would also ask the same. <sighs> I know I'm breaking the protocol, but I guess it's not that bad to tell you. And the one on his right, the officer on his right, says, Don't tell him, Gary. And he says, shut up, John. You'd want to know, too. I know you would. And John immediately says, uh, you're right, I would. But what difference is it going to make if we tell the kid anyway? I'm about to say, rules are meant to be broken anyway. So they immediately tell him, the kid, the killer, the person who killed his mom, is a villain known as the Bloody Mangler. He demangles, he mangles the bodies of his victims, and he props them up, and he rips out their heart and eats them. He always appears randomly, and he goes after mainly women that have children, because he wants to see the children suffer before he takes them out as well. We weren't exactly going to tell you this, because you'd be very paranoid about that, and Zuku's eyes immediately lit up with hope and he, he had a grin on his face a massive grin and the cops saw this and they were puzzled of why he has a grin until he ends up saying that means I can avenge them I can avenge her I'll have a chance in the future and Izuku immediately looks at them and says this, with the determination in his eyes. And once the determination in his eyes was shown, they immediately noticed this kid could be very dangerous. We need to get him into a home quickly. We can't let him go into an orphanage like this. He'll be ostracized. And right when they're thinking this, Mitsuki, who was still in the room, ends up raising her hand and saying, if you're going to take him to an orphanage, wouldn't it be better if I just adopt him? After all, Inko is one of my best friends. Once she says this, Midoriya looks at her and says, yeah, it would be my pleasure if you were to adopt me. He immediately bowed down, and Mitsuki was kind of creeped out, considering Midoriya didn't really have much mannerism before. It seems like his personality took a 180. And Midoriya ends up saying, if it's not too much of a bother. And Smitsky says, oh, it's not that much of a bother. bother. And she immediately picks him up and takes off with Midoriya. Midoriya was taken into the Bakugo's home, the Bakatsuki home. And immediately when he entered the door, he was placed down and 
Mitsuki said, this is your new home. And once she said this, he looks around and says, so where am I going to sleep exactly? And she says, there's a room upstairs to the left. It's beside Bakugo. And Midoriya immediately walks up the stairs. And right when he's going up the stairs, he meets Bakugo himself. Bakugo looks at Midoriya and says, you useless nerd, why are you in my house? And Midoriya says, I'm staying over. That's all you need to know. And he had dark eyes, and Bakugo was quite scared for once. But he looks at Midoriya and he says, What what are you doing? What are you doing here? And Midoriya says, I told you, I'm staying over for a little. And Bakugo says, Get out of my house. And he pushes Midoriya down a little. But they were on the steps, and Midoriya falls all the way downwards. And he hits his head all the way down, every step hitting his head and making him bleed. The back of his head felt like it was about to crack open when he was going all the way down the stairs. And he started coughing up blood when he hit hit to the bottom. And Bakugo ended up freezing and he ended up saying, "I, I I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do that. And Mitsuki saw Izuku at the bottom of the steps and he, she screamed. And she was about to call the call the police about this to get the ambulance to get him, but Midori immediately raised his hand up and said, "I'm perfectly fine." He got up, and his eyes had the same despair in them as before, and he merely muttered, "I'm used to it." Before he walked up the stairs, and looked at Bakugo, who was in a stunned shock phase in his face. And Izuku merely bumped past him and says, Please don't make this harder than it has to be before going up to his room. And Bakugo walked down the stairs and went towards Mitsuki, who, which Mitsuki was pissed off at Bakugo and started screaming at him. And Bakugo said, what, what are you yelling at me for? I didn't know we had guests over. And Mitsuki says, He's not just a guest. He's going to be a part of the family from now on. And once Makago heard this, he was furious. He ended up saying, why is he going to be part of our family? He has a perfectly fine family. And once he says this, Mitsu says, no, he doesn't anymore. You know his father left, and you know that you should know by now. Inko died. She was killed. And once he said this, Bakugo felt his heart drop. And she also said, and Bakugo, he was there when it happened. He didn't witness it, but he was there. So could you not be a jerk to him for once? I know you've been bullying him, and I've been trying to make you just stop. But could you please? And as he, she says this to Bakugo, Bakugo says, I'll see what I can do. Bakugo walks up the stairs and knocks on Midoriya's room door and once he hears no response he opens the door and he sees Midoriya in a chair crying and blood coming out of his head the back of his head and he sees such a pathetic sight he thought of Midoriya as a rival why is he acting like this and since he's so young he couldn't understand the concept of him being so sad over his mother's death. He could understand that, but for him to be this pathetic. Bakugo, who's about to console him before, immediately runs up towards Midoriya, pushes him out of his chair, and kicks him in the face, and starts brutally beating him, saying, Why are you this pathetic? Would your mom want to see you like this? Would she? Would she want to see you crying like a pathetic loser? And once... He said this. Midoriya snapped. He felt like something broke inside. And he said, "Hmm. Wouldn't your mom want to see you do this? Beating me consistently every day. And he pushes Bakugo off of him. And he looks at him with such anger in his eyes. You could see the hatred for Bakugo. And Midoriya says, You have been bullying me forever. You're going to bully me when my mom's dead. 
Are you going to do that, huh? You son of a bitch. And he runs up towards Bakugo. And he punches him in the face as hard as possible. Midoriya was starting to black out because of blood coming out of his face. His eyes, the back of his head, had blood coming out from his previous injury when he fell on the steps. It severely hurt, but he didn't want to be a wuss. He didn't want for the ambulance to be called or for questions to be raised because of that. Because they'd easily say that Mitsuki beat him or something. And then he put put under child protective ser- services or be put into orphanage, and he didn't want that. Since it was easy to take adopted kids away. And Midoriya was quite the intelligent kid to know this. So Midoriya immediately started pounding on Bakugo and saying, You don't know what it's like to be me. I was bullied for years because I tried to save an animal. Because I tried to save something, save anything. But I couldn't save a damn thing. I couldn't save my mother. I couldn't save that rabbit before. I couldn't save anything. I couldn't save myself. And I don't think I can. As he's starting to wail on Bakugo. And Bakugo's starting to hear the weight of Midoriya's words. And Midoriya's having tears flow through his eyes. And he says, and I thought you'd be there for me. The stupidest thing. You've been bullying me for this long. And I... Thought you'd be there for me when my mother is dead. Thought you'd care for me at least a little bit to console me. But you don't. Just get out. And Midoriya coughs up a little bit of blood. As he gets up uh, off of Bakugo who's bloodied and beaten. And he throws him out. And he closes the door. And he runs towards his bed and jumps on the bed and cries. While Bakugo walks to his room. Feeling pathetic and feeling very, very bad for what he has done. The end of part one. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you like it, make sure you destroy that like button.